Now that you have an understanding of what proteins are and what they're made up of, amino acids and the multiple different types there are, you can see this messy diagram here. This is basically kind of like a, what a three-dimensional structure for protein would look like, where each of these little turns kind of represents uh, a bunch of amino acids that are stringing together in such a way that they create these repeating patterns. But if you look at this crazy diagram here, that looks like it has like one, two, three, four polypeptides that are linked together to make some kind of big structure. You'll see that although there are repeating patterns within, uh, the entire thing will be very specific. And if you remember that a protein is actually coded for by a gene, which is DNA, you can see the almost infinite number of possibilities of protein structures you can actually create. So let's look at this thing called a proteome. Now you might have heard of the term genome before. Uh, genome, like the human genome, the human genome was sequenced more than 15 years ago. They basically took some volunteer uh, DNA and these people donated their DNA and they basically sequenced all 46 chromosomes, every single letter, A's, T's, C's, and G's, all of them. Now, their genome doesn't represent my genome, but it is pretty close because you who is watching, although you're a different person than me, our DNA is more than 99% identical and only the 1% differences in those actual DNA sequences make the, make the differences between you and me and every other human being on the planet, which is pretty crazy. So if you go from genome and you go one step further, uh, there's this idea of something called a proteome. And the proteome is basically all the proteins that are produced by cells, tissues, or organisms. And just like your genome is unique to mine, your proteome is also unique to mine. In general, we make a lot of the same proteins and enzymes and hormones, but the specific uh, types or kinds or amounts that you produce are different between all living organisms. And so that's one of the differences, that's one of the things that, for example, creates a difference between your immune system and my immune system. So one other reason that it's variable is because the proteins a cell makes can vary over time. The genome you pretty much are given when you are born, you inherit your genome, but the proteins that your body and each of your cells is actually making can get changed and regulated over time. And it's really interesting how this whole process actually happens. So more on the genome later in the genetics unit. But for now, understanding that the proteome is basically all the proteins that an organism makes, and it is uh, unique for each individual. This is a biotechnology technique or process that we're not going to get into right now, but just letting you know that this thing exists. Gel electrophoresis, um, you might do this in class. You get something like a piece of gel. It kind of feels like hard tofu or jello. And you can basically put, uh, with a kind of little syringe type thing, you can put proteins, um, or DNA, but in this case, we're talking about proteins. So you can put proteins in here and the proteins can get separated out. So you can identify the heavy proteins here and the lighter proteins if you have a selection of proteins that exist. Using this technique combined with other techniques, we can identify the proteins that are responsible for different types of processes. And once again, here are a few proteins that you'll see throughout the rest of the biology syllabus. So enzymes, here's one of the most, I think this is said to be the most abundant enzyme in the universe. Well, we, we don't know that much. On the earth, as far as we know, this is the one that turns carbon dioxide into organic compounds or sugars, uh, catalyzes one of the main steps in photosynthesis in the Calvin cycle if you're doing some review. Uh, another type of protein, hormones, nice one. Insulin reduces my blood sugar. I think I may have a problem with my cells recognizing this because I think I'm type 2 diabetic, but that's just because I drink Coke every day. Antibodies fight off diseases. Fancy name is immunoglobins. And you can see here's a picture, da, 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 basically right here, of what an antibody, the general structure of an antibody might look like. Pigments, chlorophyll is a pigment. It's a protein, it's a pigment, and magnesium is important in there. And our retinas, in our eyes, rhodopsin is the name of a particular protein pigment that helps us to sense light. 
helps us to sense light. And what else? For structure, we talked about this in a previous video. I talked about wanting to be Spider-Man. Spider Silk is a protein. Collagen is, an, is also a protein. I talked more about that as well too. So again, uh, don't get too overwhelmed and think that these are all things you have to memorize at this point. Remember to think big picture. Just trying to show you the links right now between uh, proteins and what they could possibly do for us in our body and to help us understand this concept of what proteome actually means.